So, five generations of Rainsfords associated with Bal Balboa Island. Um, who was the first? How did it all start? Well, my grandparents started coming down here in probably late 30s, early 40s. And, uh, you know, tales and pictures of them on the waterfront area. I think my grandfather actually owned a piece of property on the island and sold it before it was developed. And uh, then they came down here a lot with my father when he was growing up and would rent cottages and houses on the island and sometimes the peninsula. Right. Um, and and they were coming down from? They were coming down from San Fernando Valley. Uh, both my grandparents lived up in the San Fernando Valley on Long Ridge Boulevard, which was the, the Cowboy Street. All the Western cowboy stars and stunt people lived on the street. And um, so they would come down and uh, my dad and all of his teenage friends would show up, you know, and they'd play on their water boards on the, on the bayfront area here on the island. Dad worked on the ferry. Uh, he collected money on the ferry for a while and, and then he got uh, promoted and he was uh, the captain of the Pavilion Queen. But then we moved down in the 60s, and uh, Dad started doing lots of work on the island. So many of the stores on Marine Avenue here. A uh, big one was the um, oh, old-style ice cream parlor, the Gazebo. It was uh, owned by Lloyd and Millie Osling, and uh, he built that, and the whole inside was done with pink shingles that were all carved on the bottom, you know, rounded, uh, tile floor, kind of East Coast style with the uh, white and black tile. Uh, ice cream was on the right side, and donuts and pies were on the left. One of the other places he built that I enjoyed was uh, Ellen Carter's Haberdashery, which was at the corner of Balboa and Marine, where the Toasted coffee places now. Mrs. Carter was a very elegant East Coast style. Uh, she specialized in upscale women's clothing. Uh, we're talking summer weight tweeds, um, cashmere, silk blouses, and all the accoutrements. Kind of like what you'd find on Newberry Street in Boston or Fifth Avenue in New York. He did the old Tahiti bathing suit store here. He did Cuddlingly Sly, which was a kind of a curio place and for that place he cut a tree up and uh, put it in the middle of the store and then the branches started coming out just before the roof. So he reassembled it, took all the bark off, cut the tree up, reassembled it and made a nice quaint little interior for it. Um, he built Port Perquacky which is across the street here and it is now a children's clothing store and that's what it originally opened up for mm -hmm. as well. Uh, so he did lots of the, lots of the stores here, and a lot of the homework too. Um, worked for Buddy Ebsen and his wife, where he did a lot of their kitchens. Um, did a lot of brick patios. I got to do a lot of those. Uh, if you wanted a French country design or something like that, you know, he was he was your guy. So he just kind of worked his way through the island over the over the years. built the viaducts that brought the water from the Colorado River to Los Angeles. And then that same company built the bridge between Lido Island and the peninsula and uh, rebuilt the Huntington Beach Pier at one point in time. So he was in that, but dad was very artistic and uh, learned the trade. He did, you know, those kinds of skill craftsmanship things, but he also did brick walls and swimming pools and just about anything you wanted. He was a real artist. There was a group called the Balboa Island Ratty Dudes, the Bird Club. And I was much too young to be part of that group, but Dad kind of hung around their events occasionally. And they had some fun events. They had uh, <clears throat> one where they had a big band and a big party in the uh, parking lot of the old Newporter. And then they had a, an adult trike race. These guys would spend thousands of dollars making these tricycles, and they would ride up Jamboree to PCH, 
on the, coast, on the Newport Beach Police Department, of course, would shut the roads down. And they'd run down Jamboree and then under the island. And it would be like a parade, you know, everybody's on the street. And sometimes people didn't know they were coming. And I remember one year we were standing on the curb across from the village inn as a kid, and there was a guy on a trike coming down Marine toward the VI, and there was a Rolls Royce turning off the road, off Park Avenue, onto Marine. And the kid that was on the trike lost his balance, and he had a bar on the back of his seat that was pointed, and he lost his balance, and the bar made about three different holes in the side of the Rolls Royce, and it just kept going, you know? So, so that was there, but we spent uh, a year living at 122 Marine with some college buddies, both of which were in our wedding. One was the best man. Um, and I think we probably contributed to the uh, downstream legislation that said that <laughs> you will only have leases for a year. You can't have students for nine months and then high leases in the summer for three. Because I think the island had had enough partying that was going on. Uh, because most, you know, UCI was a commuter student campus, and 80% of the kids didn't live on campus, and a large number of the students lived here on the island. Well, we've always kind of thought of the island as a jewel of Newport Beach. Um, some people know about it, some people don't. In the tourist industry, a lot of people miss it because they go to the peninsula, which is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Except everybody here on Marine obviously wants the business, and we get a lot of that. I think it's the multi-generational companionship here. From what I've seen, I'm going through the island for me from about the age five, and I'm 68 now. As you move up in life, you find different things of interest for you in your stage. You know, there's a lots of things going on here for just about every age. And the people are nice and people are courteous. Uh, at least I found that. Um, and I think, you know, there's just a, it makes you want to introduce multiple generations to the island. My daughters are big fans. You know, they started coming down here, riding the horse in front of the toy store, walking the island, and now we're taking our grandkids here. And they move right to the banana area and get the frozen bananas and the frozen balboa bars. Taking the summer parade, maybe? We Summer parade is very important. We do that. Uh, we like to come down and look at all the decorations for the, for the Christmas activities. And those have changed dramatically. I mean, it just used to be people putting up a few lights when I was growing up. And now we've got Hollywood productions and literally thousands of people standing out there. It's just amazing.